Here is my $30 Rancilio Silvia. This is a version 3 or version 4. They kind of have the same body style. I got this from my local Goodwill for $30.29. And it's been a really interesting machine for me because my frame of reference when I started out in Espresso in the wonderful world of entry-level single boiler machines was the Gaja Classic Pro. Uh, you'll see later on in the video, I do a brief comparison between both machines. Uh, but for me, the Silvia was a machine that I never really considered getting because it was kind of confusing. There were like six versions now, and then I guess seven, including the Pro. Here is a version three or four, about that 2013, 2014 era. It's basically a better Gaja Classic Pro in every single way. That's my opinion. That might be controversial to say. This is literally a bigger machine. The boiler is bigger. Everything is just so much easier to use. And I thought this was hilarious because I got it at Goodwill in pristine condition. Aside from the fact that there were, there's just some tape marks here. Basically some accessories were just taped to the machine. I got like a bunch of uh, baskets and stuff uh, and this like weird convex tamper. And it was hilarious that I got it at Goodwill. Like RNG is, is insane for me here. Uh, but I never got to experience using a Sylvia and you would read up online people were saying, the Silvio is definitely a better machine than the Gaja Classic Pro. Like if you were to compare the same equivalent year of machine, the Silvia is generally more expensive, but it is a little bit better. This is a version 3 2013. I think this is better than my Gaja Classic Pro, which I think was a 2018 model, 2019 model. This is better than that in every single way. It's faster, it's got more space, more ergonomics, uh, and, and really it doesn't feel anemic to use. My issue with the Gaja Classic Pro, and I can make like a whole video talking about the Gaja Classic Pro, was that I just always felt that machine was just very anemic to use. Like if you wanted to make more than one drink or if you wanted to do a, a milk drace drink and then switch to espresso, it's a terrible experience. And I know a lot of you folks with Gaja Classics can agree with me, but I will admit that that if you suffer by using the Gaja Classic, I think you'll appreciate whatever machine you get after. With the Sylvia here, I've found a lot of my issues with the Gaja Classic to j just be solved. Really, it's down to the larger boiler, which basically makes sure that you can pull back to back shots, switch between steam and pull shots. Like it's just so much faster. I also want to mention that the biggest difference is that steaming performance, is that the steam on the Sylvia just doesn't really seem to run out. Of course, both of them have have that initial burst of steam and then they kind of die down. With this, the part after the initial burst of steam seems to be just way stronger than the Gaja Classic. Uh, so from a steaming performance standpoint, this is just much better. And like if I started off with this thing, I would have been much happier than the Gaja Classic. The other thing I also want to mention is that this is a physically larger machine. You can literally fit more stuff. You can actually, well, fit a scale here in the stock form without having to do a drip tray mod. Now I haven't really done any modifications to this Sylvia. Obviously, you can trick these things out to an insane degree. Like you can go full dimmer mod, profiling, PID, OPV, all of that. And I think what's really cool with the Sylvia is I feel like this larger boiler can stand up to it. Like if you're really trying to pull some of those longer shots, the boiler will be able to withstand that because it's just a little bit bigger than the uh, Gaja Classic. Another thing I do want to mention is the fact that I think the accessories on the Sylvia are just a little bit easier to obtain. Uh, so mainly that the big one for most people starting out is you want to get a bottomless part of filter. So as you can see there, Gaja Classic, they do, I, I don't know why. Why is it this design? Uh, it's not the straight style E61. You can basically just buy like a $20 portafilter, bottomless portafilter from like AliExpress and you can you can stick it in here and it works completely fine. Let me switch over to the comparison between uh, the Gaja Classic Pro and the Sylvia and you'll see me kind of rant about the Gaja Classic. Like, I, this is a machine I never thought I would actually bring out, but here is my uh, Gaja Classic Pro that was literally sitting in the corner of my kitchen for the past however many months. As you see, there's literally dust on uh, the Porta filter. But let me fire this guy up. One nice thing with uh, these single boiler machines that the Decent doesn't do is you can access the reservoir so, so easily. There's just a, usually just like a little lid and you can 
you can um, access the water like that. But anyway, heat up time on both of these machines is about the same. I, I think they're like both 10-ish minutes. I uh, never would have imagined having both of these machines side by side. This is truly entry level world. Jokes aside, so I have a few modifications done to my Gaja Classic Pro. There is uh, obviously a custom drip tray here, bottomless portafilter, if that counts as a mod, and then also a, the nine bar OPV spring in this. This is a 2018, 2019 Gaja Classic Pro. My Gaja Classic has been pretty abused over the years. I'll be completely straightforward. I do not really care about this machine that, that much because I, I actually prefer a lot of the manual lever machines and all of that over this. Like this, this machine at times is just, was just incredibly frustrating to use because it was just so slow. Also my machine uh, had this issue and it still sort of does where this steam wand started to, to leak within about a year of, of ownership. And that was really frustrating uh, to me. So like whenever I pulled a shot, there would be water that came out here. Apparently that's like a common problem. But aside from that, you know, it's a standard machine. It's a, it's a Gaja classic. Like there really isn't much to be said. Um, both of these machines are, are like pretty similar. I would make the argument like basically one just has a bigger boiler. Pick your poison. I've switched both of these machines to uh, steam and basically the biggest difference is I would say from a usage perspective is uh, this steam wand here on the Classic Pro is doesn't articulate as much. Uh, you can indeed on older Gaja Classics stick this steam wand onto those uh, models, but on the Classic Pro here, which is the one I have, you kind of really want to play around with your pitcher movement in order to get proper uh, vortex and incorporation and whatnot. Uh, it's definitely way easier on the Sylvia because as you can see, it is at 360 degree style steam wand. You definitely only want to hold them by the rubber part. Uh, it's not insulated at all. You're gonna burn yourself. So just be careful there. But let me show off the Gaja Classic Pro steaming performance uh, versus the Sylvia because I think the Sylvia just blows this thing out of the water when it comes to steaming performance. Now I'm just going to stick, stick a picture here and I'm just gonna let it rip. Like, I'm just gonna run this, and you'll gradually see that the Gaja Classic, at least my model, will, will start dying in terms of steaming forms. Like, it's, it just really it has a small boiler. But initially, great. Like, we're getting pretty great steaming performance. Uh, the issue is that this is just gonna start dropping after that 10, first 10 seconds. So you may have done your incorporate, uh, you may have done your initial incorporation of air, and stretching the milk is just really the frustrating thing about this machine is like now the steam here takes a really long time you definitely can get there and it does a good job to like you can make some really great latte art with this machine uh, but the steam is just really anemic on this thing say you just steamed your milk and you want to pull a shot you're gonna need to wait for the boiler to recover here. The recovery time is a bit slower on the Gaja here, especially because we're really, really running the steam dry or running the, the boiler out here. And you have to switch back so you can pull a shot, pulling a shot, then you gotta really wait for this boiler to heat back up. Of course, I do wanna mention that both of these are a little bit wet when it comes to steam. Like you do have to purge the water out here. This Sylvia, it seems like there's a lot of water that gets retained. Uh, in the steam wand. The actual steaming performance on this is much stronger. Uh, also, by the way, two hole, single hole on this one. This does shoot sometimes streams, a stream of water, but I barely have this open and I'm just gonna let this like, this is just much stronger steam and it will last for a way longer time too, which is awesome. So this is going to basically run on and on and on and on. Uh, and it just feels about like, I would say maybe 50% stronger than the Gaja Classic. And it doesn't run into the issue of say I'm done steaming and I want to switch back to pulling a shot. The recovery time seems to be much faster as well. Steaming performance between both of these machines is really the biggest difference. Now, when it comes to actual quality of coffee, I would say they're about the same. And you know, you can modify both of these machines to be basically the same in when it comes to quality of coffee. You can do the PID, you can do the OPV, you can do the whole entire dimmer thing on both of these machines, but in the stock forms, they are okay. You know, they're both like that standard high pressure, flat profile. The shots are kind of harsh, but they're passable. If your goal is to get espresso, you can get espresso with both of these. 
Will it be amazing? It can be, but it takes some skill, it takes some practice because you do want to obviously do some amount of temp surfing, learn the machine, learn when the boiler is the maximum temperature before you pull the shot, do that temp surfing stuff. Uh, but aside from that, the difference really is the steam. I also do want to mention the workflow is much stronger on the Sylvia here. Like the Sylvia just has more space. You, you could put more stuff, you can fit scales. You don't have to do this custom drip tray stuff or low profile drip tray. Uh, and it's just a bit easier to deal with. Both of these machines kind of sound the same. So this is the Gaja Classic Pro. And here is the Sylvia. Uh, so both vibe pumps, they kind of sound the same. Finally put the Gaja Classic out next to uh, this. I think that's probably the first time you've ever really seen me talk about the Gaja Classic ever in a video. Uh, I have some very strong opinions about that machine because it's, it's just, it's frustrating to use, um, at least compared to this. Like this solves all those problems I had with the Gaja Classic. And this is six years older. This is a version three. Like when I really think about it, I don't know why if I, now I have the frame of reference, but it's like, why would have I bought the Gaja Classic when I could have bought this and like a older one? Like I could have just bought a version three Sylvia. It would have been less money than the Gaja Classic and, or, you know, GCP, the pro model, it would have been cheaper. And it was just, it's just much faster. It's, you don't need to do mods. Like it just kind of works. I mean, of course you do, you can do the mods in terms of the, the coffee, but you don't have to do like the drip tray mod. Uh, and it just seems to work a lot easier. Of course the machine's a little bit bigger, but it's just like so much easier to use. And I think that was, that's really like a big, barrier that a lot of people who are entering the hobby need to cross is like you want to get something that is not too too hard to actually use and i think this older sylvia just is a stronger option than the current classic pro uh, because it just got it's just got a bigger boiler and that solves so many problems in making drinks although i do want to mention that at least depending on where you are and i guess if you wanted a gaja classic pro because of the colors the aesthetics then that's on you. But for the money of a Classic Pro and even a used Sylvia, maybe not like a older V3 Sylvia, uh, but like for a $500, $600 budget, you can buy a used Breville dual boiler. And uh, that's like, you know, that kind of deletes both of the, these machines that I talked about. But uh, in hindsight, I'm like, shoot, I should just bought a, a used Breville dual boiler. But if I bought the used Breville dual boiler, I probably would not have the decent. So it's a vicious cycle. I don't know. Espresso machines are weird, but that's all I wanted to say. Just a fun, like, I got this thing for 30 bucks. Go to Goodwill, go to your local thrift stores. I will have a video in the future talking about like used cups and where to get them, get them at Goodwill. Uh, but basically I finally got to use the Sylvia in, in my time and I really like the Sylvia. So uh, that's it. Thanks for spending the time to watch the video. This is supposed to be pretty fun. Uh, and if you want to hear me rant about random things, let me know and I will see you in the next one.